For a long time, I wanted to build a small remote-controlled hovercraft. But most hovercraft projects I've seen so far are for larger scale models and too complex or way too simple and unstable to drive. So this is what I came up with. It's a mostly 3D printed hovercraft that should be printable on most hobby grade printers. The motors are 1106 brushless 6000 kV drone motors, which are cheap and easy to find with some 50mm propellers. I decided to use a single rudder instead of turning the whole rear motor assembly to make it easier to steer and because I don't want to have the mass and thrust of a motor directly on the servo. This makes it a bit simpler and it looks quite nice. The rear ESC is set up for both directions, so I can also use reverse thrust for braking. It's certainly not easy to drive, but it's pretty fast with a 3S LiPo. At higher speeds it gets a bit hard to steer like most hovercrafts, but at more reasonable speeds the rudder seems to work pretty fine while still having a lot of thrust to spare. First I want to show you how it drives and then I'm going to explain how you can make one yourself in detail later. Now let's take a closer look at the construction. The top part is a single print with a length of a bit under 200mm, which is the limit for most hobby grade 3D printers. The rear servo and motor assembly can slide into the back here. Wires from the motor and ELCs are routed through the back and a small plate makes it almost airtight. You may have to cut this a bit, hole a bit larger if the wires are thicker. This way most electronics can be mounted inside, for example with some duct tape. In my version there is also a stabilizing aluminium prop guard on each motor, which you may not have, but there is a version which is designed to be used without them. In this version the top hole is a bit smaller and the rear motor mount is stiffened. The rudder should be pressed, screwed or glued onto a servo horn. 
This was the simplest way and allows you to de design a different rudder if needed. The bottom part screws onto the top part with 3mm width screws and holds also the skirt in place. The small frame around the center hole is where the air exits and the skirt ends. Mounting the skirt is tricky and might need a few attempts to get right. The correct material must be flexible enough but should not rip too fast. I found plastic bags, for example for bread, work pretty fine for me. Painter's foil was a bit too thin and trash bags are too thick. Try different materials and see what works best for you. The skirt should be cut at least around 7 cm larger than the bottom plate, with some extra in the back. Taping the edges with duct tape like this worked best for me. Then fold the corners and try to get it taped up nicely by pulling in any remaining edges like this. You can either cut the center hole before or after taping. It might be easier to mark it first and then leave some material for later. If it's large enough, it's possible to screw the bottom plate to the top part from inside the skirt here. Otherwise, you may have to screw through it and risk tearing it. If you screw from the inside, leave the center frame off for now and screw the bottom part to the top part now. The inner frame is where the skirt should be open. Fold the inner edges around the frame and tape it again if it's not tight enough. The frame is then screwed with 2mm wood screws into the larger bottom part. When finished correctly, it should hover mostly in the same spot while still being mostly frictionless. The battery should be fixed not permanently, for example with Velcro. Changing the placement can help to balance the weight exactly where it should be.